Welcome to the GoPro handheld 3-axis gimbal shootout. We'll be taking an in-depth look at two gimbals, the Pilotfly Funny Go. I'm not a huge fan of unboxing videos, so looking at the back of the box is about all you're going to get from me. And it's up against the Feiyu Tech G3 Ultra. And here's the back of its box, whose next destination is the trash can. The shootout will take place in three parts. First will be a breakdown of each gimbal and its features. I'll cover how they compare, whether or not there's something unique, and if I've encountered any limitations. I don't have all day and neither do you, so I'm going to go over things fast and show each feature back to back. Next, I'll strap them into my deluxe gimbal shootout platform and we'll take them out for a spin. Then I'll give you my summary, final thoughts, and which of these gimbals is my personal pick. And as a bonus, for those who are either bored or want to see some more comparisons, I'll throw in some of the additional footage I shot during my tests. Now, let's check out these gimbals. First up is the Funny Go. Initial impression is that it's very well made, uh, something that wouldn't be out of place at your local Best Buy. Almost all of it is made out of a lightweight metal, and it's very easy to handle. Next is the G3 Ultra. Very similar in terms of build quality, although my initial impression is that it's got a bit more of a polished feel to it. Both have a button to switch between different modes, allowing things like locking pitch or having the camera maintain a particular orientation. I'll go over these in more detail later on. This is where we start to see some of the difference. The Funny Go also has buttons to change the pitch of the camera up and down, which is super handy. Another convenient feature is the angle of the actual gimbal to the handle can be changed on the Funny Go, as opposed to on the G3, which is bolted in place which is strange because their two-axis gimbal isn't. Batteries are located in the handle, which can be unscrewed either just below the controls or at the bottom by the on-off switch. It's worth pointing out that the Funny Go doesn't come with batteries, while the G3 does, so you have to pick some up before you get it. Once again, the G3 is almost the same setup. The batteries themselves are a standard rechargeable 16340 that you can pick up on Amazon, so nothing terribly special or expensive if you want a couple extra sets. While we're on the topic of batteries, I should probably say something about the chargers. This is a charger you get with a G3, and it's pretty much the cheapest thing you can find to do the job. What's even worse is the fact that both gimbals require three batteries, but the charger only has two, so basically it takes twice as long to recharge it. The first thing almost anyone is going to do is buy a different charger. Here's what the Funny Go ships with, and if you're wondering why it isn't open, that's because it's literally the same charger I originally bought when I got the G3. Big nod to Pilotfly for including something that does more than you need and not less, as this can charge four batteries at once. I've been using this charger for a couple of weeks now with no complaints, so an excellent option for G3 owners. Back to the gimbal. Both gimbals use physical stops to limit motion. Here you can see how the Funny Go handles it. It's worth pointing out that this gimbal is a bit taller than the G3, which gives it much more roll range, although whether or not this is really helpful is debatable. The pitch access is basically free spinning, although you're winding up the cable when you do it, so just keep that in mind. The G3 has almost the same yaw limit set up, basically giving about 180 degrees in either direction. The roll is a little bit different though, being blocked by the camera in one direction and the motor in the other. I'm not really a huge fan of this, but in practice you're unlikely to ever need that much roll. Pitch is limited by the actual wire connecting it to the sensor, which definitely inhibits its range substantially when you compare it to the Funny Go that's basically free spinning. Unlike roll, this has been a problem for me in a few instances. Not a deal killer by any stretch of the imagination, but definitely something to keep in mind. Wiring-wise, everything is pretty much internal or hidden on the Funny Go, keeping things nice and clean. The G3's wiring is all exposed, which is pretty much my only cosmetic complaint about it. The camera mount gets a big minus for needing an Allen key to remove it, but follows up with a big plus for the lens wraparound, making sure that it's held securely. As opposed to the G3 that gets a big plus for using thumb screws, making getting the camera on and off a breeze. But that ease comes at a price, and that is that the camera isn't held on as securely. When it's operating, I can't imagine it causing any problems, but when I've had it turned off, I've actually had my camera fall out. Not fun. The on-off switch is a big honking red button on the bottom, versus this little black nub under the G3 that is much harder to inadvertently hit. The Funny Go starts up very fast, just a second or two and it's ready to rock and roll. The G3 is a different story, taking its own sweet time to get going. Still waiting. Now we're cooking. The Funny Go has some small LEDs in the roll motor, but it's unclear to me what they actually indicate other than it being turned on and working. There doesn't appear to be anything else indicating mode or anything else for that matter. On the other hand, the G3 has a nice big LED button that shows you what mode it's in. One flash, two flash, or solid. There's also an itsy bitsy LED in the motor that lets you know if your battery is running low or not. 
The software can be accessed via this port on the side of the motor, which runs the 8-bit AlexMOS firmware. While it isn't set up as easily for end-user flashing, it's hands down the most flexible. The G3 has a special USB plug for flashing their own custom firmware updates, but no tweaking allowed. And here you can see the up and down pitch buttons in action on the Funny Go. While you're unlikely to use them in a shot, they are great when you need to adjust things up and down. All isn't perfect in Gimbal Land though, there are a couple of issues. First off on the G3 is an annoying movement it makes when rotating on its pitch motor. Presumably this will be fixed in a firmware update, but right now it makes it a huge pain to get the smooth shots this gimbal would otherwise let you get. As you watch the GoPro, it basically stays motionless, and then you see a slight pan when it crosses some point in its rotation. It happens in both directions and it drives me crazy. The Funny Go also has its own little bit of weirdness. When you lock the pitch and then pan, it works as you'd expect. But if you rotate the handle 90 degrees and then move your hand in a panning fashion, the camera stays stationary. In practice, this is really easy to get around and it's no big deal. I just find it counterintuitive and the G3 doesn't exhibit this behavior at all. It reacts exactly as you'd expect. And now it's time to build the test rig. I've used my DSLR cage along with a couple of clamps so we can hold things in roughly the same position. First stick on the Funny Go, then stick on the G3, and I've also mounted another GoPro here so we can see what unstabilized footage looks like. And voila, the gimbal test rig is ready. To start out with, I wanted to measure drifting over time, so I put the cameras in narrow mode and mounted them on a tripod shooting the same location. This is a result magnified 500% and then sped up 400%. Both gimbals show very slight movement as they sit there, which is to be expected, but after about a minute, things start really going wrong for the G3, and you can start to see how it's drifting steadily to the right. I'm not sure how much this will really affect it in normal operations, but I am certain that no drift is better than some drift. Next up will give you a sense of how much roll these gimbals can actually correct, and you can see why I'm not as concerned about the G3 not having the same range of motion. It has more than enough range for most situations, although obviously not the range of the Funny Go. Pay attention to the G3 and you'll also see the panning bug that I mentioned earlier. Super annoying and it's obvious how it could wreck an otherwise great shot. So, what's better to test out some cool gimbals than some cool cars? As you can tell from the handheld footage, I'm not trying hard to keep it stable, I'm, I'm letting the gimbals do their job. It does illustrate though that while they can cancel out a huge amount of motion, one thing you need to be aware of is your walking gait and trying to correct for that with your arm. But even with that, it's amazing what a difference it makes in the footage. Both gimbals do a great job of smoothing motion in all of the directions, making it much easier to pan up, move around, or do just about any other kind of motion you can think of. I was also surprised at how well they performed inside the car. I find it particularly interesting to see how disconnected the car feels from the camera and how grounded the camera feels to the road. Even the relatively hard bumps on the road had no effect on either gimbal's performance. Transitioning back indoors, I wanted to see how well they performed on obstacles like stairs. No problem, both handle them with ease. What about changing pitch while you're walking around something? Once again, no problems, although you can see the nasty G3 bug popping up again. From the floor to the ceiling, G3 pitch bug included. And one final shot showing how much these gimbals can actively correct. For this, I have them locked in pitch locked mode, and you can see the G3 is a bit more twitchy and doesn't smooth things out quite as much as the Funny Go, but in some situations that might be more desirable. So there you have it, a good sense of the strengths and weaknesses of both of these gimbals. In reality, they both do an amazing job and can take what would otherwise be bland or just plain bad video and make it look as if you have some kind of skill. But as with all things, there must be a winner, and for me, the winner is the Funny Go. This gimbal performed perfectly. The range of motion is exceptional, they didn't skimp on the charger, and if you're so inclined, it can be tweaked to suit whatever kind of shooting you need to do. It's not without its faults. The Allen key camera mount would be infinitely better with thumb screws. The on-off button is way too easy to hit by mistake, and the lack of LEDs showing mode, battery, and other information can also be frustrating at times. But these are really more nitpicky complaints than serious flaws in the design. It does everything you could want it to do, and more. Don't get me wrong, the G3 did a great job. I love their LED buttons, I love their thumb screws, and it's a great gimbal, but the mount isn't nearly as secure as the Funny Go. Plus, the Funny Go has two sets of screw holes, so I suspect they could reverse the pitch motor if they were so inclined. The ultimate deal killer for me, though, was the bug in the pitch movement. They should be able to fix this in firmware updates, and once you know about it, you can work around it, but it still sucks. 
Hopefully this will help you in your quest for better GoPro footage. And make sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos about the GoPro, as well as tips and tricks to help you take it to the next level. Thanks for watching and enjoy the bonus footage.